One of the questions I get asked a lot about these nano VNAs is are they good enough to measure and adjust an antenna duplexer like that might be used in a VHF or UHF repeater system? So it's a good question and my initial gut feeling says probably not and mainly because of the limitations of dynamic range in these little nano VNAs compared to a professional unit. So let's go take a quick look at a comparison between two different nano VNAs and a professional VNA here measuring this duplexer. For those who might not be familiar, a duplexer is really a set of filters that allows a repeater to simultaneously receive a signal on one frequency and transmit it out on another frequency. And the filters ensure that the receiver doesn't get overloaded by the high power transmitter. Now most repeater systems use duplexers that are composed of band pass, band reject filters where each path from the antenna to say the transmit and receive has a band pass characteristic to give low loss for the desired frequency in that direction and a band reject fil uh, filter to reject the frequency that you don't want to go in that direction and then the frequency assignments are reversed for the other side. I didn't have access to a band pass band reject filter set so this duplexer is just a set of band reject filters. You essentially set a rejection frequency on one side and the other uh, they don't have quite as good of uh, rejection of adjacent signals and things like that, but uh, it'll certainly work well enough for this demonstration. Right, the common terminal uh, for the antenna is here, and uh, we've got essentially our low side and high side, uh, a little over 464 megahertz and a little over 469 megahertz. So what that means is on the low side we'll have a high rejection of 469, and on the, this side we'll have a high rejection of 464. So we have the VNA hooked up between the antenna and the low side. So if we look at S21 or the insertion loss uh, or the transmission coefficient, we should see a deep notch right at this around that 469 megahertz range. Okay, so here's the S11 and S22 curves for the uh, low side path. S11 is just the reflection coefficient, and we're seeing about uh, minus 10 or 12 uh, dB at around the pass frequency of 464, so that's not too bad. But the curve we're really interested in is S21, which is the transmission coefficient. And we can see that uh, we've got uh, good transmission uh, for our low pass or low frequency, 464. If we look down around the 469, we're down around minus 100 or minus 110 dB of attenuation. So that means that the transmit signal is going to be attenuated by 100 dB or more uh, it, on the receive uh, port of this duplexer. And that's really what you want. I mean, most uh, repeaters will have a, an, an attenuation goal of 90 dB or better. So this one is uh, you know, 100, 110, you know, sometimes eking down to 120. I think we're just looking right down into the noise floor of uh, this particular VNA. Uh, but you can see why you really need a, a large dynamic range to measure something 100 dB down or more in order to see this rejection. So let's take a look at what we see when we look at this on the nano VNAs. And one of the things I should have mentioned at the outset is that uh, for each of the measurements I've shown you and the ones I'm going to show you, I've already taken the time to carefully calibrate uh, each of the VNAs over this 460 to 475 megahertz frequency range. Okay, so here's the uh, nano VNA H4 that you've seen in some of my other videos over the same 460 to 475 uh, megahertz frequency range, the same 10 dB per division uh, that I'm showing here. On the professional VNA, I set it for 12 divisions because there was enough dynamic range to see down nearly 120 dB, so I had to do that. Here I don't have, uh, I've got only 8 divisions, not 12. So we can see that uh, the input return loss, uh, or input reflection coefficient, I should say, is about the same but I'm really more concerned with the band reject characteristic because that's the thing we'd be tuning. And we can see that uh, if I adjust the marker to about that same frequency range, we're sitting down, oh, about minus 60, uh, minus 60, 63 dB. Uh, and we were seeing close to 100 or 110 dB down on the professional VNA. So that means there's another, you know, 40 dB or so of rejection that this duplexer is offering that can't be seen on the nano VNA or at least the nano VNA H4. And also you might be uh, might think that the actual notch is down here because that's a little bit lower. 
But I'm not sure exactly why that's happening because uh, we know that from the professional unit that the, the notch is actually very close to where I've got the marker here. And I think what's happening is we're hitting the noise floor here off a fairly steep uh, edge of the filter. And then as we're coming up here, the filter isn't quite as steep, so it's incorrectly showing you that uh, the notch is actually down in this area when it's really over here. So, you know, I think you could do a basic check of the duplexer uh, with the Nano VNAH4, but if you want to measure and adjust to get uh, a rejection that's more than 60 dB down, you'd, you'd probably be hard pressed to do it uh, with this unit. Now, some of you sharp eyed viewers might say, hey, that uh, display looks a little bit different from the other Nano, Nano VNAH4 videos that I've done. Now, I'm actually running a different firmware on here. This one is. Uh, offers a number of enhancements, including some enhanced dynamic range. This is even better than I was getting before I updated the firmware. This one is by a developer called Dislord and offers actually 401 points in the sweep instead of 101 that we've talked about in previous videos. And also offers me the ability to adjust the measurement bandwidth. So instead of being several kilohertz, uh, that's by default with the Nano, v Nano VNA H4, I'm using a measurement bandwidth here of one kilohertz. Note that I was using a 5 kilohertz uh, measurement bandwidth on the professional unit. So in theory, if everything was equal, this would actually show me better results. But I think, you know, again, just the, the lower noise floor, lower dynamic range of this unit just means that, uh, again, it's going to have limited use for really adjusting and validating the settings on a duplexer. Now, a few weeks ago, I decided to pull the trigger on this unit. Uh, you may have heard me talk about the SAA2, which is a another nano VNA, but with a little bit different hardware design and designed to go up to 3 gigahertz. This is a variant of that that has a about a 4-inch screen and end connectors and a nice metal case. So I, I saw it became available and figured, you know, again, it's pretty inexpensive, so let's go take a look at how this one performs. Now, as with the two previous VNAs, I've also carefully calibrated this over the same 460 to 475 uh, megahertz frequency range. And we can see that the, if we look at the return loss here, it's actually hitting the bottom of the screen. So I'm going to change the scale uh, for this display to give me, oh, let's say 12 dB per division instead of 10. So I can kind of see how far down the S21 curve goes. Now, if we move the marker down there, uh, we can see that this guy is getting down you know, around uh, minus 70, minus 75, minus 80 dB. Um, so a lot better than the um, uh, Nano VNA H4. You know, at least 10 dB better, maybe even a little bit more than that. Um, so I think we're getting closer with uh, the SAA2. In this case, the SAA2N. But again, I think uh, it would be good to use this VNA to do a check on a duplexer just to be sure things aren't grossly off but in terms of fine-tuning that notch uh, I still don't think that these nano VNAs are going to have enough dynamic range to really let you optimize the maximum amount of, of loss in each of those paths. Now, overall I say that the uh, the SAA2 is a really nice improvement in performance over the uh, the original nano VNA H and H4 um, and I like the metal case I like the end connectors available in this version but uh, neither, neither of them are really going to have the necessary dynamic range of, say, a professional VNA like this, this Tech uh, TTR500 series in order to do a proper job on calibrating or measuring and adjusting uh, high rejection uh, duplexers. But uh, that being said, I think the, the VNAs are a, a tremendous value for the average uh, electronic hobbyist that dabbles in RF, uh, amateur radio operators and things like that. Uh, for doing things like uh, that we, we typically do, designing filters, uh, maybe looking at uh, insertion loss of, uh, of various devices, uh, as an, a really nice antenna analyzer for analyzing the input impedance of antennas and helping to design matching networks and things like that. These nano VNAs are really an incredible value for well under $100, which is uh, orders of magnitude less expensive than a professional unit. So other than this one particular job, you know, I'm still a big fan of the Nano VNAs. Unfortunately, I just don't think they're up to the job for looking at duplexers. So I hope you enjoyed the video, learned a little something. If you liked it, uh, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do so. And thanks again, as always, for watching. Take care.